I'm Jim Rugg, and you are listening to 11 O'Clock Comics. Oh, I have a great book. It's going to set Jason's world on fire. Oh, you. Yeah. Yep. It's going to make your day. You're going to run out and want to read it. Because I don't... Can't wait. Yeah, I don't notice it on your list. Okay. It's not there. But after I read it, you'd be like, what? But you know what? Unfortunately, in order to talk about it, you got to spoil the shit out of it. Do what you got to do. By now, it's almost a week old. Oh, it's ancient. Yeah, we can talk about it. Hey, everybody. Look at this. It's the world famous 11 o'clock comics. Episode 937. I'm Vince B. You are Vince B. I'm David A. Price. I can verify that. And of course, I am Ken the Eagle, but you can call me Gotcha Man. Oh. Interesting. You're not Ken. You're Jason Wood. I? No, of course not. You're Jason Wood, everybody. What's up? Here together again. To do what we do best, and that's Talk Comics, brought to you by CheapGraphicNovels.com. CheapGraphicNovels.com. You're sitting around your house and you're thinking, oh, you know what? I didn't order that book. Where am I going to get it? Mm, CheapGraphicNovels.com. Those are the words that should be in your brain because you are going to save a whole mess of money if you go to CheapGraphicNovels.com, which will enable you to then parlay that savings into more books. See how it works? It's a snowball effect. You get massive quantities of books from CheapGraphicNovels.com for not a whole lot of money. Manga, omnibus editions, trade paperbacks, OGNs, all that stuff. And much more there for you to take home for not a whole lot of money. If you're a first-time buyer, here's what you do. You get that email receipt that says, hey, thank you for ordering from CheapGraphicNovels.com. This is what you ordered. It'll be shipping soon. And you reply to that. And say, you know what? 11 o'clock comics sent me. I Otherwise, I would never have known about the joys of CheapGraphicNovels.com. And Max will say, smart person that you are, guess what you've just earned? Free shipping on your next order. And then you back the U-Haul up and order all the shit. All of it. CheapGraphicNovels.com. Because you're not paying for shipping. Who, does, mm-hmm. who, who wants to pay for shipping these days? Nobody. Sure. The shipping rates are out outrageous they're out of control like ridiculous facts yeah i had a mail address which could not have been more than a pound and a half so you didn't say yes to it no i well it wasn't mine number one and it cost me 18 dollars to ship a a, what get out of here but anyway you won't have to worry about that on your second order from cheapgraphicnovels.com because max is going to pick up the tab Mm cheapgraphicnovels.com yeah Jason, you better get a bit a little little bit more lively. I'm not I'm not having this. Wait, what? Yeah, you heard me. I'm drinking. That's nonsense. What? It's not nonsense. It's facts. Hashtag facts. This is a little brew from uh the Equilibrium Brewery from Middleton, New York. It's a lovely sixteen ounce can. It is called MC Squared. Ah. It's a double India pale ale. Get it? MC squared. And it is a beer balanced by science. And it has Einstein uh, cleverly illustrated on the front of the the can. It is uh, 8.0 ABV. So yes, more of this, please. From Equilibrium. Love it. It's really good. Nice. Well, Vince, in keeping with last episode, I'm still running it back on the uh, on the on the the wine tip because oh, of nice. the Napa trip. Yes, yes, sir. And I am drinking a 2021 Cabernet Sauvignon, and this is the O'Shaughnessy Estate Winery Cabernet Sauvignon. And if you're wondering what it tastes like, Vince, let me tell you, it's I was a wondering. delicious, delicious mouth watering. Great cherry fruits and blueberry nuts. Who doesn't love blueberry nuts? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nuts or notes? And if we're playing the uh you know the you know the uh 
The, the scoring game? The scoring game. The name we can't name. What is it? The scoring game, yes. The Robert Parker 95. Pretty high. You've 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 had higher. But no, that, I don't think I, I don't think I have I don't think I have on the show. Yeah. Well. Okay. I can get a ninety five down at the corner store for like twelve bucks. But that's like that's like winehose.com. <laughs> so what? Sure. It's still a ninety five. <laughs> It's all relative, it's, dude. It's the toothless mofo behind the counter giving yeah, you that ninety five sure. score. Why does he not have teeth? Why you gotta go there? <laughs> that hard, man. Oh my He's goodness. He's opening bottles with his mouth. His mouth. Mouth. What are you drinking, Dap? Uh well, I'll um I'll also go for something that was rated ninety points from the wine spectator. Uh this is um Fuerza, it's a, um, it is, what the hell, uh, it is 75% Monastrell and 25% Cabernet Sauvignon, it is, t- it spent 12 months in premium oak barrels, no, no wish.com oak barrels over here, but it is, uh, 14 by 5% alcohol by volume, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tasty, I like it. Excellent, excellent. I'm going to go first in case you guys team up again. Because mm. there's a high probability of that. Don't be scared. Not. I'm not scared at all. Jason, this is a book I told you would light your world on fire. I'm waiting with bated breath. Okay. It's written by Steve Orlando. It's illustrated by Ibrahim Roberson and are you ready? Dale Eaglesham. Now why why don't why why don't you think that um why why would only I team up with Jason? Well I'm opening the door. But I because I see I saw this on your list. So I'm opening up the door, but it's not on his, so therefore he wouldn't team up, but you quite possibly and in, inevitably will. Color art by Niraj Minan and Raul Angelo. And the cover, of course, is by Nick Bradshaw and Rochelle Rosenberg. You know what it's called, Jason? <laughs> He's not even listening at this point. It's no, called, I know what it's called because I have your list, but I mean... Nice. Annihilation 2099. What? Yeah. Yes, it's the good old Annihilation concept applied to the 2099 universe. It's about a man. It's about a man. Yes. And this man has a whole lot of pain and misery in his past. Heaps of pain. And he's seeking a new beginning. He wants a fresh start. So where does he go? Xandar. Xandar's the home of what, Jason? Um, The Nova Corps. The Nova Corps, yeah. Yes. So he's experienced loss. Apparently, the Hulks took an eye and an arm from this man. Um, it's not detailed how or when. Maybe that's a story that's left to be told. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. But uh, he's incomplete. So the Nova Corps scientists claim they can help. So the man volunteers to be a test subject for a revolutionary new process, one that infuses the cells of the subject with pure Nova force. So he's a self-powered living battery for justice. Now the first phase of the process is a success. Working, thumbs up, let's go. Second phase interrupted by an invasion of these creatures called exoparasites that feed on, you guessed it, Nova force. So the man tries to defend the planet but every Nova falls, as well as everything living on Xandor, save for the man. So to stop the infestation from spreading, the man destroys the planet and moves on to do that for which he was designed this time around, uh, using his newfound massive power to ensure justice. And the man ends up in a town called Shurgash on the planet Orn. And this is where the book takes a very weird but welcome turn into a space western territory. 
got a bunch of ne'er-do-wells, stumble upon a meteorite, and become host to, you probably guessed it by now, a symbiote. Uh, one that is intent on perpetuating the gospel of its dead god, no. They call themselves, get this, this is freaking brilliant. You have a group of null acolytes, a group. What would you call yourselves, Jason? Be creative. Uh, numb nulls. No, they call themselves the null set. Mm. Come on, that's great. <laughs> that is so cool. Mm. And so they eventually attract the attention of the last Nova, the man who we are talking about, who makes relatively short work of the gang because this Nova has an ace up his sleeve. See, this Nova, the last Nova, is battling Captain Merck, who was the leader of these ne'er-do-wells. And Captain Merck impales him, kills him, or so he thinks, and walks away. And when he walks away, or tries to walk away, he hears two sounds from behind. You know what those sounds are, Jason? You tell me, Vince. Snicked. Ah. The last Nova is Logan. Wolverine. That is not awesome. It could be. It is. It's very much awesome. <laughs> this is this is what I love. This is this is one of the things I I love about Vince. And as soon as I saw the sound effect, I was like, I know, I, I know, Vince is absolutely. Did you guess up until that point that it was Logan? No. No, 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 no. The the, the snick obviously. Right. And deliberately I, gives it away. I so, thought but, I kind of looked at it, saw an X in the, the costume a little bit. Like the design motif of the costume makes it look like there's an X pattern on it. But I was like, nah, that's that's not. And then most of the issue, when he's not in the Nova costume, he's running around bald yeah, and, ha yeah, and hairless. So you can't hairless. tell who it is. Yeah. Um, the uh, And and, and he's, he's kind of... And, and he comes across a little taller than what you would expect. But, so, I mean, it it, it, it was hidden well enough until the reveal. Yeah. But what I, and, and, you know, I appreciate Marvel pulling things like this because it's a same re it's one reason why I enjoy Cosmic Ghost Rider so much. Yeah. But I love the fact that Vince is like, fuck your legacy characters, get these youngsters out of my way. As long as the heroes that I've grown up with can exist centuries from now, well, somehow, truth. Big truth. I am still so in love with them. Hashtag facts. It's yep. like Helverine. It's like, it's fucking Ghost Rider and Wolverine together. I love my derivative shit. Dude, I've read both issues. It's really good. Whatever. I don't care what you think. That point, that point is well made, though. Like, it's true. You like it's derivative a... ass shit as long as it's not someone new. Right. If if the last Nova turned out to be Kamala, I'd be like, whatever. This book sucks. <laughs> Fuck a character that just hit puberty. Yeah, what it, whatever. But um, no, I thought this was great. But be, and there's a backup story, um, mm. beautifully, beautifully illustrated by Daily Gilsham, which ties into yes. the recent Spidey Twenty Ninety Nine series. Yep, yep. Um, it's it's the arrival of Dracula. Yeah, and the formation of his new crew. Um, he's floating. <laughs> he's floating in space, and this this crew of scavengers find him and. Shit hits the fan, and Dracula turns the entire crew. One of them's a Shire. Oh, we're talking, we're talking space vampires. And yeah, well, the 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 vampire planet. He thought in in Miguel in Miguel O'Hara Spider Man twenty ninety nine. They've they've relegated all of the vampires to a planet, a planet with oceans of blood. So you know, keep them in a in a vampire zoo, more or less, and we don't have to worry about them. But Dracula, if you read that book. It's off planet in a in a space sarcophagus, and um, these people find they think it's you know booties, the salvage. They're looking make a payday, and it turns out it's the Lord of the Vampires, and he just rips through the entire crew. One of them's a Shi'ar. One of them is from um, 
I forget the name of the planet, but it's Planet Hulk. Uh, you have Scar. a Scar. 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 Yeah, you have a Skrull in there. So, I mean, it's a, it's a cross section of the characters in the Marvel Cosmic Universe, which is neat. And, uh, so yeah, uh, they've already released the press, um, a piece for Annihilation Conquest, which will follow up Annihilation 2099. So and now is it is 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 I is Annihilation twenty ninety nine a, a a weekly series? I think it's a five week thing. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I believe because... so. That's uh, his um, Orlando stuff has all been five week things, from what okay. I can see. Like the last. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, yeah, in issue two we've got uh, Star Lord twenty ninety nine versus Quasar twenty ninety nine. Yes, <laughs> keep it in the wheelhouse, right? Annihilation yeah. was fun. And yeah, Annihilation was was a blast. Yeah, shout out to uh, Abnett and Lanning. Yep, yep, yep. yep. But no, this was really good. Um, I, I'm not familiar with Ibrahim uh, Roberson, but uh, the it's art was really book, good. Yeah, yeah. He's and it, he's a pretty. I mean, he's been a regular Marvel guy for the last couple of years. And there, there's a point in the thing where you can you can feel the you can taste the dust in your mouth because well uh logan he's coming up on the ne'er-do-wells and it's just a shot of his gun belt and he pops the straps of his so it's it's like you know the good the bad and the logan it's it's really neat the way they play it off as a western after the the initial um backstory i thought it was a whole mess of fun i mean if you've enjoyed annihilation the Abnett Lanning Giffen um, event, uh, you'll like this a lot. It's it it doesn't traipse on anybody's petunias. It's its own little thing built upon what has come in the you know what we had in the past, and it's just a lot of fun. There's not a whole lot of heavy lifting, and if you love Wolverine and who doesn't, you'll dig this issue. What'd you think? Yeah, was, did you love it? I was I, I I really did. I I didn't know. I mean, because I'm. There's one more issue to go in Symbiote Spidey 2099, so we couldn't do an Orama on that. But the, um, like I said, I think that comes out next next week. But, yeah. um, but I, I've been having fun with the 2099 stuff that I have read, and yeah, Annihilation was was an absolute blast, and and I think that the, that whole thing from start to finish, all the all, all the lead ins, then of course it gave us the Guardians, and then we had Conquest. It, it, Annihilation was a lot of fun. Period. Yeah. Uh, if if it, Speaking of cheap graphic novels, if nobody had, if, if you do not have those collections, by all means, please grab them if they're available. Yeah, a lot of fun. Um, May have played out a little too long. May just a little bit. Yeah, but at least, but 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 the but the series, the event proper. Oh that's, yeah, flawless. that's where it's at. Flawless, like you don't have to yeah. worry so much about all the spinoff and and, and three titles but uh as far as this this first issue of of, of this five-parter um no yeah the first story was 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 great i I had a lot of fun with that the reveal hit me i was like this is cool i dig it and i immediately thought of frank castle because i was like this is cool i i like i like characters that we know in the present day uh and and the characters like that work frank castle maybe not as much of course he's a herald so it does but someone like wolverine this is obviously years after Old Man Logan and and whatever the hell has happened to him in that. So um, it it works. Why why wouldn't he still be around in the universe and 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 off planet obviously? But um, twenty ninety nine is not that far into the future. Well, not now, right? I mean, it was, <laughs> it was when the the whole concept started. But the uh, like they'll the, be in Earth in twenty ninety nine. That's true. That's true. Like, like the wow. Earth the year from now. But way to bring uh, this down. The uh, but and 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 the bat I you know I do like Eagle Sham a lot. Um, the Dracula this this he's he's obviously um, is it the Mar- the new Marvel Dracula? No, it's, no, he's it's using, he's using the model sheet from from the old Dracula. It's Tomb Marvel. of Dracula. Yeah, oh, yeah, nice. yeah. It, it's cool. it's yeah. It, it, he looks like he's coming off. That's my only nit set. with the with the Blood Hunt is that the I mean Marvel's got this like new you know super powered super strong looking Dracula which. Castlevania Yeah, yeah. But visually, and, and, and as far as the facial features and the color of the hair, the super-powered gray-haired Dracula is more in line with the Bram Stoker Dracula than... No, it is. But yeah. they make him so mus- you know, like so yeah. muscular. And right, just, that, not so much. Got the costume. But, you know, but just... Jack Palance of the Bronze Age right. 
that was, you know, a construct because Palance was Dracula at that time. I mean, yeah. sure. Yeah. The but even, push even the, uh, yeah, even the, uh, yeah, the, the, the Dracula story was neat too. And, and quick little intro on, on his next, uh, band of, uh, merry men, but no, I, I, and, and, and we even get the, the last Nova costume designed by Pete Woods. Yes. Didn't even draw anything in the comic, but he, he gave us character designs, which is, I, I always dig when, uh, when an artist that that's drawn everything else elsewhere for other companies, it's just like, yeah, let's just we'll come in and do some character designs for you yeah. all. But no, it was, it was, it was a night. It, it, it was a neat first issue. I'm looking forward to the rest. I thought, uh, it, it's yeah, they, they knew, I think, if anybody was on the fence or just, you know, had, had a spare five bucks in their pocket or however much this cost. And, and I, I think they did it right by starting this series off with the last Nova and, and, uh, right. it, it's, it's a good hook. I, I and think there, that uh, it was smart. There's data in the back. Yeah. If you, there's like a, a computer readout, um, tastefully Nova designed. Core intelligence. Yes. Um, you get the exoparasites, Null, in case you didn't know who Null was, uh, Howlett James, a.k.a. Logan, and the unfortunate, uh, which be- begs the question, if they do give you data on uh, Scratch, the captain of, the ill-fated captain of these, these scavengers, why, if he dies in this issue, would you waste the space on a data blurb, which makes me think that he's coming back mm-hmm. whatever and i i don't usually buy marvel trades because more often than not they're flimsy and yeah the, and the yeah. covers curl and shit um but i make an exception for the 2099 stuff that orlando has done oh. I, yeah i buy all the trades and i'll and if they do put them in an omnibus format i'll buy that as well i, I like to have them on the shelf where i could just read them I can get, I can have access to them immediately because I, I have and will reread this stuff again. I just love the 2099 universe. Yeah. And, and it's Logan. Gonna, what the hell? Yeah. Like, stop. If they are going to. Man, you are such a Wolverine mark. It's hilarious. It's crazy. It doesn't matter. Uh, Wolverine 1602. We have. Um, <laughs> what, the, the, the one thing. <laughs> you're a dick. The, the one thing. Thou doth protest too much. The one downside to this issue was it made me want more Dale Eaglesham. And why isn't he on mm. like a monthly or a bi monthly or something? Like get him on an event. Eaglesham is life, dude. He Eaglesham is one of the best of the best, man. He should be on He's really he, good. Yeah, he, he should good, be yeah. front and center. Like we yeah. should we should at least have a Dale Eagle. We no, should yeah. have a Dale book. Eat, like at least every other month just to show everybody like look this is how it's done yeah you, you this is how comics should be yeah his 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 run on on justice society is still like one of my favorite tc runs of all time he's amazing yeah he is. yeah for sure and uh and I, yeah and, and there was also a footnote uh an editor's note in the dracula story reminding everybody that um it was miguel who sent dracula back mm-hmm. in uh 2099 number two so yeah but yeah. It was it was a neat day for editor's notes. I, I honestly hearing you guys talk about this, like I, I I believe this is what I'm about to say is true. I don't think I've ever read a single twenty nine ninety nine issue of any kind. Ever? That's nope. sad. That's that's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've I don't I didn't read any of the OG stuff and I certainly haven't read any of the new stuff as a result. Brother, the Fantastic Four 2099 is the Fantastic Four. It's no, I mean, not, it's not a f- you guys gushed about the 2099 past and present many times. I just, it was just a white space for me, and I never felt compelled to jump in just because it felt like a whole other like, universe to commit to. You, know? you, you would love Doom. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Pat Broderick. I don't doubt it. Like, I'm not down in the quality of it. Yeah. Just didn't, didn't Doom is it. great. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I like Ghost Rider 2099 the best. Uh, yeah. I think Bicello and Ashley Wood, they killed on that book. That's a hell of a creative team. Jesus. Uh, yeah. 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 Huh. Yep. More respect. All right. I think you should place another cheap graphic novels.com <laughs> order. <There you> go. <laughs> but this it was fun. This was phenomenal. It's definitely the best thing I read all week. It pulled me out wow. of my funk. It got, it, yeah, it got me all hopped up. 
like a, like a, like a kid. I I loved all, everything about this issue. Yeah, you are a fascinating creature. I was like, hot damn, the the malaise has been lifted. I'm feeling <laughs> it. Fucking Wolverine in a Nova Corps costume. <laughs> Shut up. Oh my goodness. Love it. I'm not. I'm easy to please. I'm really easy to you please. Are, Especially when when the art is this good. I mean, yes, it's mainstream stuff. Who cares? It's a whole boatload of fun. Nice. Yeah. Respect. Yep. Nice. And well, it's boys, um, you know, sometimes you're gifted with, like, you're gifted with things, and you're like, man, this is what we do. This is why we do it. This is why we keep at it. That's why we keep reading these comics. That's why we want to talk about these comics. And, uh, I love the first volume of this. We talked about it when it came out. But I think the second volume, and, and shout out to our boy Ray, who posted about this on the Slack. So EOC, if you want to be a patron, you can join in that conversation. But he he posted a very wonderful and detailed write-up about this and how much it hit for him. And I have to say I completely agree with him. I thought the first volume was great. I think the second volume is even better. Uh, and that is Moon Ray, book two, Echoes of Ascension. Uh, continuing in, in much like we have been, Vince has been praising Eric Larson and Savage Dragon all this year, I feel like we continue to sing the praises of Living the Line, which is, uh, you know, a small publisher that just continues to get, be getting, getting great things done. And this is the, the latest in, in, in their output. Uh, this was a Kickstarter, much like the first volume, um, written and drawn for the most part by Brandon Graham with about 20 pages drawn by, Longtime friend of the show and EOC uh, annual uh, logo maker, Giorgio Penalta. Nice. Um, co- so they're both credited as the creators, but but you know Brandon does the majority of the, of the stuff on this. But uh, um, <clears throat> it's just a it's a magical book. I mean, it's it's the closest thing in terms of like modern hot off the presses comics that I think we get to the very classic stuff that we loved from the seventies and eighties European science fiction comics. Um, there's, and I think no better, it's no better said, uh, than the introduction of this volume. Uh, and these are hard covers I should mention. Um, Sylvain Despray, who many people be like, who the fuck is that? Um, he is a very well-known storyboard artist for films. Uh, for the most part, he has done, uh, and and I know he's gonna it's gonna make Dap's heart sing. He was the storyboard and concept artist for The Fifth Element. Ooh, yes, among many other films. But I thought The Fifth Element was the one that uh, tickled tickled my fancy the most. But he's done like he did a couple of the Harry Potter films, Planet of the Apes. He did the First Avengers, Alien Resurrection. So he's done a bunch. But but The Fifth Element I think is kind of like a sweet spot. But anyway, uh, Sylvain's intro I think really hits it, and he says in their effort. Moon Ray, uh, in their joint effort, Moon Ray, Brandon Graham, and Giorgio Penalta have taken me back to my earliest memories of visual science fiction. Their story might just as well have appeared in the pages of Metal Herlant 45 years ago, alongside the works of Philippe Caza, Jean Michel Nocolet, Vaughn Bodie, Francois Schouten, Serge Clerc, Denis Sire, Jacques Loeb, and countless others in this vein, all under the watchful gaze of Mobius and Drier, who led the genre into the stratosphere. Moon Ray, true to form, is faithful science fiction fantasy armed with DNA from the golden age of Europe's majestic comic book export and cosmic exploits, as was practiced in those glory days. And that's not all. Together, Graham and Penalta take uh, take on one of the harshest challenges of the graphic novel enterprise, telling a story with non-human characters, all the while keeping it relatable and filled with beauty and charm. Only the most dedicated to storytelling paired with the cleverest illustration and graphic strategies could pull off this feat. Moonray is a journey in time, both into the past and future of illustrated science fiction. Uh, I read that because I couldn't say it better if I tried. Um, I think that is a wonderful synopsis of this book. And it's just absolutely majestic. Um, I, I have been, I think, as, as we all are, a, a longtime fan of Brandon's work. Um, I think that, you know, it's it may sound hyperbolic whenever we talk about a car- creator we like and their new stuff saying it's the best work of their career. But I really do think that may be the case with Brandon here. Um, I think he's just on a level here. He is taking the things that make him a wonderful storyteller, which is a very unique cartooning style and ability to be really creative visually and, and, and give us 
imagery that just we're not used to, like truly orthogonal imagery. And he's just crafted this wonderfully complex but beautiful story about a now for I don't you know no I don't blame anyone for not remembering what we talked about with the first volume, but in the first volume we meet a character who eventually goes by the name of Adam. He's basically like a cosmic being that was brought forth from like the the cosmic primal forces that uh, they call Mium in this book, and um, he was created uh, to av- basically avenge uh, the the god who created most of their life that they all know um, who was killed. He was created to avenge her, uh, but in this book he is on that journey, but he is sort of on the run from this group called the Hive, and um, the Hive is a uh, you know basically a, a group of, of of kind of savage aliens that have a hive mind and they're trying to take him out and destroy the Miyum and, and and the beings that were created by it. Um, again, it sounds high concept and it is, but ultimately, like you can read this book without really. Deal, delving into the high concept if you don't want to and what you get is just this jaw-dropping science fiction fantasy landscape where he goes through this alien world befriending people finding allies warding off enemies trying to find his purpose trying to understand uh his own abilities and and, and what his 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 sort of his his grand gesture should be uh and it's just incredible and i will say that um I know we all talked about Sovereign Drain, uh, the amazing um, science fiction cartoon that was uh, aired here in the U.S. And on, on HBO Max. And and the thing about that cartoon that lo- I love so much was that it was a, about people trying to survive in an alien world. But the thing about the, con- the cartoon that made it amazing is that the alien world felt alien, meaning like – the physics of the world, the way things interacted, the 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 designs of the organisms, the way that they uh, like defended themselves and and procreated and 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 their their way they manifested and the way they moved were all completely alien. It it wasn't like what we're used to because so much of science fiction is steeped in like humanoid forms doing things that humans do only they have different skin colors or maybe have horns, but like. In Sovereign's Reign, it was like totally strange. Like everything you saw was not like the world we live in. And that's what these Moonray books are like too. Like everything you see is not in any way visually or like the way that they act or the way they move. Nothing is like the way that we act or move or the way the animals or plants that we know of act or move. And that's a hard thing to do. Like I think about what that's like as a creator to be to disconnect yourself from like the conventions of the way we see the world and the way that we know that like – things act against one another or the way that things are portrayed and to be able to completely like erase yourself of that and come up with a whole new playbook is pretty damn hard, at least as I see it. And I feel like Giorgio and, and Brandon absolutely do that in these books. And um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's, it's, if you're in any way a fan of Mobius or, or any of the metal Hurlon stuff, I mean, I just don't see how you're not absolutely gobbling this stuff up. Um, Cause like I said, it's the closest thing, we have in the modern era, except for, you know, I would say this is probably on point with like some of the stuff we get from the magnetic, you know, imports like, like those, those books too would be of the same quality and the same vibe. But, but other than that, like we're, we're not getting anything here in this, in, 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 in modern storytelling and comics that, that, that approach that kind of European masterpiece that we got, you know, when we were kids. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you didn't pre-order this uh, through the Kickstarter, then I'm pretty sure you can get it through conventional means now. But it's it's just amazing stuff, and it's it's just pretty hard to even define, really, because it's really so much of the mastery is the visual storytelling and, and how, how different it is from anything you've seen before. And so uh, you, the only way you're going to really fully appreciate what I'm talking about right now is to buy the book. So please do check out Moonray, uh, book two, Echoes of Ascension. Well, guess so, what? What? I don't have either of these what stop and i just ordered them from our sponsor cheapgraphicnovels.com yes. um the images that came up when i did a, a search were tagged to amazon so i went to amazon and pulled the images and i noticed that amazon's discount is seven percent the books are 32.55 on amazon so i went to our sponsor cheapgraphicnovels.com and they are both 25 percent off yes so you'll right. get them for 26 Max 25 a piece so i just placed an order for both and they will be coming soon nice yeah 
I love both of those creators. Uh, I don't know why I didn't order these, but I now have uh, eliminated that uh, oversight on my part. Respect. Right. Coming yeah, soon. I saw Ray post it, and I made a note to, to check them out, but I didn't before tonight, so now I, I got to order them mm. as well. I guess my, my love of the first volume didn't, didn't, didn't resonate with you guys. That's cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's all about you. But I got to read twenty nine nine though. You do? Yes. Oi, David, <laughs> take us out of this pit, please. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> uh, one of the books I picked up at uh, at Heroes, uh, actually the first first table Vince and I went to Friday morning, uh, dude, with all the hardcovers and the paperbacks, and uh, this was an easy purchase because I did check out the first issue when Image sent it to us ages ago. Um, I was like, this is neat. I'll I'll wait for a couple of issues to, to come out and then I'll binge them. And then uh, that didn't happen, but I saw the trade. Actually, it, for some, I don't know if this was, I don't know if this is a, uh, supposed to be a, a book plate or something, but it came with a, Autographed, not a postcard, but something that, that, that was signed. I'm not sure who signed it because of all the people that are in this book, I'm not sure what the scribbles are for. Anyway, Indigo Children Volume 1 by Kurt Pyers, who apparently, I did not know this, uh, is was a member of the Forbes 30 Under 30 in 2022. Uh, Kurt Pyers and Rockwell White are your writers, uh, story and script. Uh, Alex Diato on line art, D Kunif on colors, and uh, Hassan Atsmani Elahu on letters. I the concept, the idea, the the term Indigo Children, I was somewhat familiar with. Um, and then you can go down a whole rabbit hole. You can Google that and just. Be amazed if you're a Department of Truth fan, you might enjoy it. Um, but the idea behind this series, and uh, I, I, I think we're getting more soon because the first volume is just the first six issues, and it's definitely open to uh, to continue. But basically, 15 years ago, there was a group of gifted children who claimed to be reborn martians sent to earth uh to save the world they disappeared without a trace and um and they were they were called the indigo children and there's a journalist who um has been looking for clues tracking tracking anything he could uh for some information hunting hunting down the children, uh, just to find out what happened. Anybody who might have anything to do with it, who might know anything about it. Um, and by poking behind the, uh, the veil and, 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 and picking at the scab, whatever you want to call it, he just, the chain of events uh, it just spirals out of control from that point forward. And uh, each of the children uh, grown now all have different the power sets um there is one indigo prime who seems to be near omnipotent he's, he's got the he's, he's he lucked out when it came to uh the power lottery but everybody else you've got uh, somebody who can turn visible uh someone who can kind of create um tangible items like it basically makes these big blocks and you can either use them as stairs or walls make like a fortress or hide people uh but everybody's got got different powers and the the way um it, it it's it moves at a really good clip things things start picking up speed once uh once you find out uh who's who and and who's responsible for what and how many people might be involved in, in, in trying to cover this up and uh, whether or not it's even true. And it, it's, it kind of goes on a global adventure. We we're, we're, we're in Russia, then we're like over in, in Asia. It's just, it's, 
it's wild and and it is it there are some pages that have a ton of panels and then there's some that might have nine or six but um some of it actually reminded me of uh of of pluto especially when some of the children are meeting other children or, or, or memories are um unlocked and and people remember who their friends were uh but it was it, it reminds me of the way the other when when like when when one robot would remind another one of it, it just the way the way the interactions played out it it, it things clicked when and, and reminded me of uh when i was reading pluto but i i just thought this was a um this was wild. It wasn't what I was expecting. I, I mean, after the reading the first issue, I, I, I kind of had a sense that I would, I would dig it, but um, I, I feel like I should have just read it as it was coming out. Although I did like the fact that I could read it all, read these six issues, six issues, one after another um, without the break, because it did move where I didn't want to risk forgetting anything and, and reading it as it was coming out that, that was a possibility, but um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't know really how wild or crazy it was going to be. I mean, it starts off with a with a plane explosion, and uh, and and just the way they they we see a passenger getting on a plane. Um, his kid's name is Alexi, but he's he's acting all nervous, and and he's talking to uh, to the woman on the plane with him that. Uh, that something doesn't we, we don't see the word balloon because he's whispering but uh or we can't see the contents of the word balloon because he's whispering but um he's uh he, kid's mom is going to say you know alexis mother is going to take care of things just 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 find your seat um but next thing you know there's a uh there's a cop putting a gun in a passenger's face and the plane blows up and we do see Alexi later on, but you're not sure if it's the same Alexi from the plane. Uh, and it's not for issues later that we find out what actually happened on the plane. So Kurt and, uh, and Rockwell were definitely playing the long game with some of these plot threads. But uh, yeah, I just thought the way, the way it brought, the way we, the, nothing was just presented really linearly where you could just kind of read it as it was happening. The, the flashbacks and the, uh, and, and the way the memories played in, in, into reintroducing the characters to one another. I just, I just thought it was really well done that way. But, um, there is a, uh, there's something a little bit more sinister. Not everybody is, uh, who they appear to be. And, uh, and, and that's why I really want to find out. I really want that seventh issue. I need that second volume coming. Um, this was just, I, yeah, I, I, it was one of those things where I just didn't know what to expect. I mean, five bucks was, it, it was an easy purchase to begin with, but the fact that I got something out of it that, uh, that really, um, I just sucked me into this whole, whole idea that this world, with these characters and, uh, I, I one one of the children, um, her uh, her parents were were murdered, and the, basically the uh, the crime boss who murdered murdered the parents because the father was basically the accountant and uh, was skimming, stole money so that he could escape. He, he could take his wife and his kids and get out of Dodge. Um, but the boss found out, killed the family except the girl, and raised the girl as his daughter and she was young enough where she really thought that this man was her father uh but then um she's reintroduced to fred one of the other children and finally things click and come back and and uh and she remembers everything that happened and and that this man is not her father and she does not uh she didn't appreciate everything that was taken from her so she kind of uh lets him know that but uh yeah, I mean, as far as revenge and and the uh, the power sets and the, the there's there's a supporting character who's basically he's human, um, 
he's kind of their uh their their guy friday he he's got connections he's uh he, he he's getting them weapons or vehicles or passports whatever they need uh but then things get a little bit hot and heavy and he's kind of got to have um he, he knows his limitations so he, he he bows out um and uh and and not everybody kind of makes it through the first book, and uh, it's a bit of a bummer in that regard. But yeah, I thought it was a uh, thought it was a wild ride. I, I really um, I was pleasantly surprised, and I am looking forward to, to seeing where the story goes. And this might even be another one of those things that gets uh, that gets optioned um, for a series or, or a movie or something. But uh, it's it, and 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 it'll play well on that in, in that regard. It, it, it'll. It'll transfer to uh, to live action really well, um, but I thought it's a uh, as a concept and, and where it's going. I, I doubt it a lot. I don't know who else might be reading it, but uh, I'd be curious to know if anybody, whoever is, what they're thinking. Yeah, I haven't. I, I own it. I just haven't read it. Mm. Yet. Yeah, curious but, to know what you think of the art. Yeah. Vince is taking the dump right now. <laughs> Did he put that in the slack? Or he's pulling an east when he's asleep. Oh, no. That'd be funny. I'm pause again. I'm such a knucklehead. You really are. Knucklehead. I was I was doing stuff in the background. Keeping the... 937 the, episodes. Keeping the gears... Hey, somebody has to do it. Keeping the gears rolling, right? I should yeah, have right. I should have known that it, when I was I was actually speaking and didn't know I was on pause and I'm like what mm. the fuck so yeah there we go hey everybody thank you for being here with us this time around hope you come back next time get yourselves to a comic shop but if you can't there's only one place to go to get your books where is that oh my Cheap god graphicnovels.com nice almost in unison cheapgraphicnovels.com Everything you want. All stacks and stacks of books. OGNs, omnibus editions, manga, trade paperbacks. All that stuff. Tiny investment on your part. And you're going to save so much, you're going to add another column to your order sheet. Or another, a bunch of books to your order sheet. (laughs) Just do it because it's so easy to save money at CheapGraphicNovels.com. And... Remember, our Patreon is still going strong. Patreon.com forward slash 11 o'clock comics. Shaking like crazy people all over the place talking about a whole mess of things. You get a bonus episode. You get the slack depending on the flavor of the the uh, the tier uh, you want. It's just fun. It's rewarding. It's engaging. It's very often challenging. Um, we offer a whole bunch of freebies that keep your day lively you get cover images you get sequential pages you get fanzine downloads out of print stuff that you can't find anywhere else you can probably find them on our (laughs) slack it's just fun and if you love comics you'll love the the slack speaking the truth yeah and also um wherever you heard this or wherever you listen to this leave us a review please because it's very important (laughs) Mm-hmm. We 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 thrive on that. So make us thrive. I have something that is unlike anything out there right now. It is a book called Curses by George Wilesall. And it comes from Avery Hill. George has a very interesting visual voice. Um to my eye. And I did some snooping behind the scenes, and it confirmed what I assumed anyway. That um, this book was done primarily in Adobe Illustrator. Okay. All the lines are very clean. They're fixed width. There are segments of this book that are very tell-all in terms of what was used to create it. Because there are functions in Adobe Illustrator in which to manipulate lines and shapes that are very apparent to anyone who has used the program. Primarily the punk and bloat feature. And there's a couple panels where I noticed the, the punk and bloat was employed. But what George does is 
the lines are very clean, but he dirties them up with this digitally dirtied textures, um, prim- probably in Photoshop. And it just looks great to my eyes. It it looks alien. It looks strange. Um, it's an anthology. And a lot of the stories employ a liminal space envelope. Uh, primarily the first one. There's. Uh, I'll just set the stage for the first one. I won't go into every one of them because there's a lot of stories in this thing. But the first story is called Ghosts. And it's about a man who works in the basement of a hospital. And the man assumes, or what he's been told, is that there's miles and miles of corridors underneath this hospital. And he works alone. Uh, have either of you seen the back room things? Back room. The back room? Yeah, it's it's a series no. of it's a series of shorts on YouTube that just feature a first person perspective of someone traversing these almost barren hallways. And they're going around corners and and all the hallways look the same. Very low key, very mundane, uh, like uh, tannish or yellowish um, wall color, and just like very basic and and boring carpet. And it's just a person going through these these hallways endlessly, and then something will, will happen or something strange. Like there'll be a an opening in a wall that is very out of place. And it's it's just the whole liminal space idea where it's not it's a transitory state between one point and another point in time, and they're just spaces that allow for a transition in mind or it's sometimes body or physicality. It's I, I love the the whole liminal space idea, but in in these hallways, the protagonist seems to see ghosts but they're not ghosts in the visually in the traditional sense that we've seen ghosts depicted like smoke like forms or anthropomorphic shape like things or or fleeting glimpses of something that we would associate as a human being these are just sheets they look like just plain low key salmon colored curtains but the protagonist calls them ghosts. And and things happen within the story that lend the reader to believe that this person's not alone in this extended space. Like, part of his work, uh, he's a technician, so part of his work is, is manipulating cables, and then a, a, a mass of cables would just suddenly appear in in a spot and it's just a very strange story um and as particularly the ending is 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 very strange then there's a story called the rabbit that that this shapeless thing that's wearing a cardboard cutout mask of like a, a a face like there's two holes for what would be eyes and what what hole for a mouth that lives in a forest and and the the creature allows this jackalope crossed with a deer creature to die uh and the forest retaliates and the creature is relegated to the the earth and it just decomposes like it's again it, it, this is the, the kind of anthology where you can attribute meaning or many different kinds of meaning to s- events depending on the avenue from which you approach this stuff right there's no definite he did this this is what happened and it resulted you know in like that's not no the 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 resolution on a lot of these stories is very up in the air it's it's very dependent on the translation or the deciphering of the viewer how the viewer deciphers the events i think this book is great it, it like i said it's it's not it's non-traditional the everything about the book 
is non-traditional from the visual appearance to the type of storytelling to the the events within the the book it, i think it's just magnificent but it this is what i love it's someone that just i encountered that that speaks in a language that we're not accustomed to seeing on a regular basis like it's mm-hmm. very left field and the approach is entirely unique. And I just think the book is phenomenal. It's Curses from uh, George Wiley Saul from Avery Hill. Um, it's out. I believe it came out in uh, 23, late 23. So you can get it. Uh, I would recommend that you do if you, if you want to be challenged or, or experience um, a realm of comics that is not often visited. I, I, I would very much recommend this book it's different it's extremely different and there are a number of visual approaches like some of the the there's a story called castle maker that's done in an an old school 8-bit style and then you have the traditional illustrator um fixed with line but then the one story i told you about with ghosts it gets a little different the the textures um the colors and the textures looks like the uh, one of the printing plates was kicked out of register and the the color overlaps the line like i love that that is one of my favorite things when the the color plates are intentionally knocked off register and you get these mm-hmm. beautiful overlapping um colors it's just great i i would i love this book and it is definitely in the uh consideration for my anthology of the year when uh, okay yeah mm. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to win because there's a lot of great anthologies out there. Mad right good anthology here so far. Yeah, uh, but it's uh, it, it will be considered because I think it's that good. So curses by George Wallisall from Avery. Foiled Hill. again. Yep. Yes. It's strange. Yeah, it's very strange, but it's wonderful. Right up your alley. Yes. I uh, in your travels. Um, there's a black label book. From DC, uh, written by Mariko Otamaki with art by Abir Rodriguez. Letters, um, Asanas Mani Lahu. Uh, this is Zatana. Bring down the house. Um, it is a limited series, like I said, black label, um, where it's not necessarily. As a Tana, that um, it's not the the confident, sure, certain Zatanna that uh, you might be used to from your Justice League readings, but um, this is a a Z who uh, does tricks in Vegas um, at a uh, at a hotel uh, at a casino. Um, she never says she does magic; she does tricks, um, and. Uh, and the art, I love the art. Uh, Rodriguez can draw some sexy figures. There's a, uh, there's some, um, Zatanna sleeps in nothing but boxer shorts, which I find so hot. Uh, it's, it, it, it is like sexy to see, to see a woman in, in, in just in boxers and, and nothing else. Nice. But yeah, you got, got a little bit of, a uh, little bit of side boo here, Vince, but there's a, um, there's there's something going on. Her her uh, her pet rabbits are basically cowering from her. No idea why. They're they're just acting super skittish. They're they're going. They basically want to go to the other side, beyond the crate that she keeps them in. When 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 she goes to to check on them in the morning, they want nothing to do with her. And she even she even goes to uh, get one out of the out of the cage and uh, and it bites her. So um, it just it is not. Uh, Really, isn't no good vibe from Z at the moment. She goes on a run, and she looks down, and there's not only her shadow. There's another shadow also running behind her, and uh, but no one is behind her, so that's that's kind of freaking her out as well. Um, she uh, she reports to work and uh, is all set to put on her free show. There's someone in the audience who's been to the show seven times. Um, kind of, uh, kind of like wearing disguises each time. I mean, wearing sunglasses, but the outfits are always kind of, 
kind of different and sometimes weird. Um, but uh, she keeps having memories of when she was a kid. She was a young girl, and she was doing magic tricks for her friends. Um, and this one knucklehead kept calling her uh, Zabanana and uh and and mocking her and because her dad's a magician so she's supposed to be so great and she keeps messing up the uh the shell game and he keeps mocking her and she uh she ends up um casting a spell we have no idea what the spell is and we have no idea what happens to this kid except uh basically um (laughs) they all just went away and uh and the woman in the audience um, is trying to snap Zatanna back to reality, and um, and and the woman from the audience uh, is um, is is basically like you know whatever she's trying to tell Zatanna whatever you're up to, whatever you're doing with uh, with him, and and Zatanna's not sure who him is, uh, but. Um, but it, she's referring to Zatara, obviously Zatanna's father. Uh, Zatanna's like, well, "Dad's dead," and um, and the woman's like, "Yeah, I know you killed him." And, and then that's the end of of the first issue. So uh, Zatanna's been through some things, at least in this series, uh, when she was younger, and and everything from then to now uh either she's been keeping locked up or or it's been trying to escape but something something weird is happening and uh and and that weird also in, infected her her little show that evening uh in Vegas so yeah i i'm i'm dying to see where we're going with here but uh the art like i said the art is great if you're familiar with rodriguez you know what this should look like um and and that it looks great the colors are fantastic um but yeah, I, I, I got to see where we're going from here. So any travels, Zatanna, bring down the house, issue number one from DC's Black Label. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, listen, in your travels, Cosign Dap, that was also my inner travels. I, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, Rodriguez's art is just, just amazing. I just love the guy's work. Um, you know, I, 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 I fell in love with his work on spider woman uh he had a long run on that and uh it's great to see him back on a book doing another badass female character and the black label gives him a little more ability to stretch his muscles like you said a little little skin showing a little fan service it's been nice uh yeah I, i'm on this book hard and with you so uh yeah so i'll just leave it at that co-sign with that sweet nice all right everybody hey we hope you enjoyed this Come back for the next episode because it'll be more of the same. We can't do it any other way. In the meantime, uh, like I said, get yourself to a comic book shop, read, talk, communicate, share, all that stuff because that's what the hobby's all about. Say goodnight. I don't have anything queued up. So, Jason, you're going to have to make some sound. Hmm. Do it now. Uh, make some sound. Yes. Got Everybody it? enjoy. Many of you will be listening to this either on or the day after the holiday. So if you're off on Friday, then enjoy the long weekend. So, uh, you know, got to make something out of this holiday. Well, that was sound, David. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say after you good sound. You said sound. I thought it was a good sound. Well, this will be the Tuesday episode. It was well-intentioned sound. So oh, yes. true. Yeah, true. Uh, hope you all heard. had a great fourth. Hashtag facts. Hashtag facts. There you go. And it's those Wolverine. So mm-hmm. much. Dave. I don't know why, though. Like, I, I've, I've always You're liked... you in at heart? I liked the character, but I was never as invested as the past yeah. couple of years. Yeah, you're just in on it, man. Well, it, I can't wait to see you gush about the Capullo book, because it's like... Oh, Taylor you're so Wolverine now, and then Poppy Capullo is going to be drawn on him. It's like... Phew. Taylor made and it's and it's Hickman like you know it's going to be well written the flavor you save a neighbor yep that shit's going to move a ton of books oh hells yeah yeah it is just I, I mean we're talking Batman level you know 
for sure, for sure. Because uh, memory is fleeting, but I think Capullo made such a strong impression on the Batman crowd with his run that I think there's going to be a lot of crossover. This is going to be one of those deals where like, I'm not going to elevate it to the Superman burn type thing, but I'm guessing that Capullo is going to manage to coax a lot of primarily DC fans to come over and read a Wolverine story. I'll agree. Yeah. Yeah. All right, people, we love you so much. We can't do this without you. And they're going to tell you that. That. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> can't do it without you. Just tell them you love them. Be genuine. Be honest. I can't fight this feeling anymore. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> At least it Ooh, wasn't yo. Phil Collins. That's good. Aw, see? We out. Aww. Bye. I can She's definitely so feel weak. it coming in the air tonight. So weak. You can't. <laughs> Why are you so weak? <laughs> Shout out to MSG. That's it for that one. <laughs>